In this video, we'll do our second example of determining the term symbols of an atom. So let's say we have an atom, and it has every possible subshell either completely filled or completely empty, and the only partially filled subshell is a D subshell. And let's say that there are nine electrons in this D subshell. Let's determine the term symbols possible for this atom with a D9 configuration. So the number of determinants, the number of distinct states, the number of ways we can order nine electrons in 10 spin orbitals, the 10 spin orbitals of a D subshell. Remember for D, L equals two, so two L plus one is equal to five. And then two values of spin for each of those, spin up and spin down, 10 total possible, val 10 total spin orbitals in our D subshell. So 10 choose nine, is equal to 10 factorial over 9 factorial times 10 minus 9 factorial. This is equal to 10. All right, and we're looking for filling out all 10 possible combinations for we can, ways we can arrange 9 electrons in these 10 spin orbitals. So I have that drawn over here. Basically, there's only one, one spin orbital that isn't filled at any given time, and I'm just having that travel from right to left as we go. So we need to calculate the values of M sub capital L and M sub capital S for our atom in each of these determinants. For M sub capital L, we just add up the values of M sub little l for all of these spin orbitals. It's a D subshell, so L little l equals 2. So M sub l is 2, 1, 0, minus 1, and minus 2. For M sub S, we add up M sub capital S. We're adding up little m sub S for all the electrons. Every spin up electron is plus one half. Every spin down electron is minus one half. So we have for M sub L in these cases, two plus two plus one plus one plus zero plus zero minus one minus one minus two gives us plus two. Same thing there. 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 gives us 1. And that trend continues all the way as you go across until you get 1, or sorry, 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2, giving us minus 2. For M sub S, we have here five spin up electrons four spin down electrons. So the only thing that doesn't cancel is the last electron giving us plus one half. In the second case, we, we have the same thing except for the last electron is now spin down, so minus one half. And we do the same thing all the way down the line. Every determinant we go, we do plus one half, minus one half, plus one half, plus one half, minus one half, plus one half, minus one half, plus one half, minus one half, giving us a net total of plus one half. All right, now that we've got M sub L and M sub S for all of our possible determinants in this configuration, we look at the maximum value of M sub L. The maximum value I see is two. We look at the maximum value of M sub S. Maximum value of M sub S I see is one half. So max M sub L equals two means our possible values of capital L for the term symbol are zero, one, and two, or an S, P, or D state. For M sub S, maximum value being one half, that means the only possible value of S is one half. So for two times S plus one, our multiplicity, two S plus one is two times one half plus one, which is two. So our only possibility for spin is a doublet state. So combining these two, our possible term symbols are doublet D, doublet P, and doublet S. All right, now we're going to build a table. We're going to build a table where all of the columns are values of M sub L, all of the rows are values of M sub S, and we're going to write down how many values, how many determinants there are that have each value combination of M sub L and M sub S. So for two and one half, there's one, two and minus one half, there's one, etc. Going all the way down the table, for all 10 of these values, there's one for each case. Okay, now we arrange our possible term symbols, doublet D, doublet P, doublet S, going down the line. 
Max M sub L and Max M sub S needed to find a doublet D, doublet P, and doublet S term symbol are one half for each of them being doublets, then two, one, and zero being D, P, and S. The values of M sub L go from plus L to minus L. Values of M sub S go from plus S to minus S. So the number of the number of determinants for a given value of L is 2L plus 1. The number for a given value of S is 2S plus 1. So the number of determinants belonging to a specific term symbol is going to be 2S plus 1 times 2L plus 1. So here, that's going to be 10. So we have uh, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, plus 2 times 1 half plus 1 is 2. So 5 times 2 gives us 10 determinants needed, but we're just looking if there's this 2, 1 half to begin with. We're starting at the maximum value of, of S and the maximum value of L, and then descending from there. We, indu, we indeed do see a term symbol of M sub L equals 2 and M sub S equals 1 half. So we will have a doublet D term symbol because there's a non-zero value for the number of of determinants available for each value of m sub l and m sub s that we need for a doublet d. So doublet d, uh, for d we need to go from plus 2 to minus 2. For doublet we need to go from plus 1 half to minus 1 half. We see all of those term symbols there. So when we subtract out those 10 determinants that we need to make our doublet d term symbol, the only thing we're left with is a matrix full of zeros. So there are no other possible term symbols because there are no other determinants to assign to those term symbols. So no more doublet D, no doublet P, no doublet S. Lastly, we need to take that doublet D term symbol and add what values of J are possible. So we have J goes from L plus S to L minus S, absolute value of both. For D, L equals two. For doublet, S equals one half. So we're going from five halves down to three halves, every half integer. So our final possibilities are doublet D five halves and doublet D three halves. Um, the last thing I'll mention are the values of M sub J belonging to each of these term symbols. So J is in our subscript on the right here. And just like for M sub L and M sub S, M sub J goes from plus J to minus J in either integers or half integers. So for doublet D five halves, M sub J equals plus five halves, or plus or minus five halves, plus or minus three halves, and plus or minus one half. There are six total determinants in there. Doublet D three halves has M sub J of plus or minus three halves and plus or minus one half. There are four total determinants in there. Notice that when I add up all possible values of M sub J for all of our term symbols, six plus four, equals 10. That's the total number of determinants in our doublet D term symbol. It's also the total number of determinants that we used to determine this term symbol. So the number of determinants that we put in is the number of distinct quantum states that we get out. So our term symbols will actually have these 10 determinants in there in various linear combinations such that these all of these quantum numbers are available and our 10 states in gives 10 states out.